I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Do It Christ Way, a cooperative effort of the Metroplex Area Churches of Christ. Get your Bibles and join us as we study and let the Scriptures teach us Christ Way. In humility we cherish, speaking where the Bible speaks and being silent where the Bible is silent, preaching the good news of salvation to the unredeemed, strengthening the saved, encouraging the weary, and lifting up the fallen. Welcome to this edition of Let's Do It Christ's Way. Today, I've got joining me Brother Mike Crosby, and it's going to be just the two of us today, but we're going to be uh, dealing with the Scripture, and so actually it's the three of us. It's the Holy Spirit through the words of the Scripture, Amen. myself and you, and with the audience this morning. And today we're going to be talking about great things from the Bible. And we're going to be focusing on three great areas, of th three things that are mentioned as great or have great effect on us uh, from the Scripture today. And we're going to start in the Old Testament. We're going to look at the great fall, the fall of mankind that necessitated God working out a plan to bring us back into right relationship to Him. Let's start there, Mike, and Absolutely. introduce us to the topic this morning. Well, first of all, let's talk about, as you said, the great fall that's found in Genesis chapter 3. Uh, beginning at verse number one, if we take a look at it, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Mm. Now it's amazing that the devil knows what God said. <laughs> I, don't rem I don't remember reading in, in chapter two that the devil was there when God gave the commandment, but it's interesting that he does know what God commands. Good point. But notice what the woman said in verse two. She says, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the tree, but excuse me, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Mm -hmm. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Mm. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, mm. knowing good mm -hmm. and evil. Now notice this. Now you, she knew what God said. Mm -hmm. And then what the devil came along and said right behind what God said, and notice what the devil said was more appealing. Because mm. notice in verse 6 it says, When the woman saw that the tree was good for, for food, food yeah. and that it was pleasant, pleasant to the eyes, mm. and a tree to be desired to make one wise, how wise? Wise as God. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, she took, took fruit. of the fruit mm -hmm. thereof, and what? Did and eat. did eat, and gave also to her husband, with her and he did eat. Mm. Now that was the great fall. They had everything. That's right. They had everything. I mean, notice, what was what was her responsibility? To be a help meet to Adam. Mm. What was Adam's responsibility? To keep the garden. Uh, who, whose responsibility was to make things grow in the garden? That was God's responsibility. Mm -hmm. God gave him the home. God gave him the obligation. God gave him the divine blessing. But sometimes what God gives, Brother Larry, just doesn't seem to be enough for folk. You know, let's look at the fall then from that standpoint. Absolutely. Remember, fall from what exactly? They enjoyed a relationship with God. The Bible says that God, that God walked with Adam. Absolutely. They talked with Adam. Absolutely. And, and, and so when we go from a relationship of companionship, you know, the camaraderie that they mm -hmm. had, to now there is a separation between God and his creation. Absolutely. Between God and Adam, mm -hmm. God and Eve. Mm -hmm. And this caused problems. And this is a problem that God spent centuries unfolding a Amen. plan to counteract. But, but going back to the fall for just a minute, God is just, you know, the Bible tells us in Adam all sin, mm -hmm. right? Just as in Adam all sin, and sin, of course, we know brings about death, mm -hmm. wages of sin is death. Is death. And so when sin, when it is fully conceived, bringeth forth death. Mm -hmm. So God is justly, and let me use a word, condignly uh, uh, righteous to he can condemn us for our sins at this point. When we reject the will of God, when he's given us clear instruction, we reject that will, we fall from a relationship with God, a fellowship, and now we have to look at how God begins to restore that Absolutely. relationship. Absolutely. Let's go to the next great before it, it, you had me. Well, actually, I just want to say, uh, notice that the sin came in when 
man disobeyed God. Right. Okay. And and we we need to make that clear. Why should man obey God? Well, first of all, God created man. That's right. God gave man everything that he needed to survive. He gave him everything that he even gave him a woman. <laughs> you know, he saw that he was alone, and he says it's not good for man to be alone. So he created a woman made from the very flesh and the very bone of Adam himself. Mm. And see, with all of these great gifts that God gave Adam that Adam could not give himself, God has every right and every expectation that when God tells us to do something, that not only should it be followed, but it should be followed, one, because God said it, and two, because it's the best thing for us. Let's look at that a little further. Remember now, the responsibilities really came after the fall that he had to work at, by the sweat of his brow Absolutely. for the ground to well, produce. That was the penalty. <laughs> right. That was the penalty of sin right. because God was bringing forth everything anyway. Anyway. Uh, my point is, is that prior to the fall, right. God was the provider. Absolutely. He, he still was the provider afterwards, yes, but man had a part into it. It's just like when your children live in your house. Mm -hmm. And as long as the provider is providing and the kids are at the behest of the provider, they have to obey the rules of the house. Absolutely, absolutely. And don't get me started on parenting because that's a whole nother <laughs> show. Uh, but, but let me say this. After the sin came the shame. The sin was in verse 6, but notice the shame. Uh, their eyes were open, verse 7 says. Mm -hmm. And then they looked at themselves and saw that they, they saw themselves differently. That's right. Okay, as long as you are obeying the Lord, you see yourself as God sees you. Mm -hmm. But when you disobey, your, your perspective changes, your view of yourself changes. Mm -hmm. And now in your own eyes, you, there are things about you that you have to cover up. And so they sewed some leaves together and covered themselves. And then when they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, they hid themselves. That's right. Okay, when we do wrong, there is something in us called a conscience that convicts us of our wrong if we listen to it and then we we don't see ourselves worthy to stand before the presence of God you, you know let, let's let's use that as a, as a segue point absolutely because now that they are in a position of uh, of, uh, of sin mm -hmm. to even be in God's presence says something about the love of God absolutely for his creation for Adam and Eve that he even mm -hmm. continues to deal with them absolutely he could have Destroyed them. Absolutely. And started the, over. Absolutely. And started completely over. Mm -hmm. That was certainly God's prerogative. Absolutely. But and, and just like with us when we sin and we get to points in our lives where we feel inadequate and we feel so ashamed of what we've done because of sin that we have committed in our lives, mm -hmm. that, that that even for God to like David said, Who is man that thou art mindful? Or the son of man <laughs> that you even <laughs> visited, visited him. him. Absolutely. You know, that shows the love that God has for us. Absolutely. What about return? The, the, the great commandment. Let's move to the next great okay. thing. Matthew, 20. Matthew 22. All right. Let's talk All about the great, great commandment, commandment that Absolutely. we have. That we, what? Love, Love God. God. All okay. right. Beginning at uh, verse number 36, uh, actually, I guess for sake of time, we'll just, we'll just move on. That uh, when, when Jesus was, was they, they approached him, they tried to trap him. Actually, they tried to tempt him. And, uh, but he says, Master, in verse 36, which is the great commandment in the law. Mm -hmm. Now, these men knew the law. That's, that's who they were. They were Pharisees, and they were Sadducees, and they were, they, were, they were experts in the law. But here it is. They're trying to trap him who gave it. Okay. And he says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Mm. Number one, you have to put your whole self into the love of your God. Okay. Now, some people do that, but unfortunately, it's not the right guy. Okay? <laughs> now, that, that's another whole number to serve him right there. And then I notice what Jesus says in verse 38. They only ask for the great commandment, but Jesus always goes beyond mm -hmm. what's expected. Yes, sir. And he does that in our life. He's a God of second chance, and even though you ask God for one commandment, God gives you the not only the greatest, but he gives you the next one. He says, it's just like it. He says, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two, verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Mm. So if we just love God and love our neighbor as ourselves, we've just met the requirements of, guess what, the Old Testament. That's right. I, I, and, and I want to I wanna make that perfectly clear. What if I don't know how to love myself? Mm. If I, if I have so, such low self-esteem or if I've had such a bad example of what love looks like mm -hmm. in, in, my, in my life experience, then the way I treat you 
If I treat myself poorly, I'm going to treat you it's going to reflect poorly. That's Absolutely. Right. That's why I'm glad what Jesus said in John 13, 34. He says, I want you to love one another as I have loved you. He says, a new command that I give unto you. Mm -hmm. This is a new one. You've heard love your neighbor as yourself, but if you don't know how to love, allow me to show you what love looks like. Amen. Great love has no man. I, I, I hear you. Then to, <laughs> then to do what? Love. Lay down his That's life right. for his friend. friend. Okay? And, and, and we, we love John 3, 16, which says, you know, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm -hmm. that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but it shall have everlasting life. That's wonderful. But I tell you what, as children of God now, 1 John 3, 16 is more applicable to us. <laughs> Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us mm -hmm. and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. If I'm willing to lay down my life for you, mm -hmm. what is it that I'm gonna hold back from you? See, this is the kind of love, this is that great love that Jesus is talking about. You know, that has solved so many issues that come Amen. up uh, uh, in our Christian walk. Uh, when you become a child of God and you learn to love God mm -hmm. like God loved, why, you know, those song, you know, Oh, How I Love Jesus, mm -hmm. or, or uh, why do you love him? Because he first loved, loved me. me. Absolutely. When you realize how much God actually loved you, and this is the idea of grace. We're, we're always talked about, talk, talked about for being works teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we do believe that the Bible says that if you love God, you'll keep his commandments. Absolutely. They're, they're, the two are, are, are it's exclusive. Uh, to, it's, it's mutually exclusive Amen. that you love God and won't keep his commandments. <laughs> when you love God, as you lo as he's loved us, he left heaven for us. Amen. He, it was not necessary for him, for his, for Jesus uh, to be saved, to come and die on our, you know, on our behalf. Right. right. Didn't benefit him at all. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, may, it cost him a great deal. Absolutely. Yet he did it because he loved us. Now, should we not requite or return that love? Uh, to God, and that's the reason we've got, and, 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 and love, we're going to have to go to the break now, mm -hmm. but, but love is learned. Amen. And, and we're going to have to deal with that just shortly after the break. Absolutely. We're going to break and pause and uh, acknowledge those congregations that support this broadcast. We encourage you to find the one nearest you. We encourage you to visit them at your earliest opportunity. You'll find a warm welcome awaits you at any and all of the services of the Churches of Christ. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We've been discussing some of the great uh, things that are told to be great or said to be great from the Bible. And before the break, we talked about the great fall that necessitates the great commandment. Absolutely. Uh, that we, learn, we love God. And we mentioned before the break that loving God is sometimes for some a learned process. We have to learn, first of all, like you pointed out before the break, how much God loved us Absolutely. and demonstrated so by making it possible 
for us to correct this con Amen. <laughs> from the, that the fall created in us, that sin that separates us from God. God bridged heaven and earth and created a way whereby we might overcome that Amen. and be brought or reconciled back into a right relationship with Amen. him. And the Bible tells us that we ought to fear God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning, is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. But we grow from the fear of the Lord to, as John says in 1 John, that perfect love that casts, gets out rid fear. casts out the fear. Absolutely. We go from doing things because, just like as children, you know, we start out doing things because we fear the reprisal. Amen. You know, we fear the consequences of mm -hmm. our actions sometimes in our parents, but over time as we learn and as we grow, we learn that the things that they're asking us to do are only right and only for our own good. Most, Absolutely. You know, we, we start brushing our own teeth after about the first trip to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nobody has to tell us anymore, right? Amen. <laughs> you know, so things like that that we learn along the way. And the same is true when it comes down to following God. We see that God's commandments are not grievous. They're not hard. To, Jesus said, come unto me all you that labor. We labor in the field. We labor in this life. Amen. Uh, uh, and sometimes we are overburdened and that's because we don't carry our burdens to the Lord. But God loves us that he will bear our burdens. And so with that being said, when we learn to love God, one thing that is necessary uh, to demonstrate love or that is demonstrative of love for God is keeping his commandments. Amen. And, and see, one thing is, as Jesus said, you know, a new command I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. How can we prove, how can we say we love God whom we have not seen mm -hmm. and yet hate our brother that we have seen? All right. Let me go to 1 John chapter 5. Just allow me to read the first three verses. I want to show you if we truly love God, what a loving child of God looks like. All it right. says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Yes, sir. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. So if God gave birth to us into his family, then we not only love God, but we love all those that God gave birth to into his family. Man. Okay, does that make sense? So mm -hmm. in other words, if we love the Father, we love the children of That's God right. as well. And note uh, verse two, by this know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Mm. We prove to the Father we love him, and we prove to the children of God that we love them, or the body of Christ, or the church of Christ. We, we prove that we love them when we keep God's commandments. Mm. Why? Verse 3, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments, as you said before, are not grievous. Amen. So if we're keeping God's commandments, I have no choice but to love you the way God loves me. Freely I've received, mm. so freely I must give. And you talked about, we've mentioned before, about loving the brethren. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we love God, we, in, we, we, we bear the burden of the brother. Absolutely. We bear one another's burden. Amen. And, and, and that is something, you know, the majority of things that, you know, we look at, one of the big problems is our, in our society today uh, we, we have is this aggressive driving. Mm. You know, people get upset <laughs> on the road. Uh, and, you know, the road rage is, is, mm -hmm. is kind of getting out of control. Amen. And, and all it is is somebody wants to be a half second ahead of somebody else. Mm -hmm. And when we think of, put that in perspective, what, is somebody's life, does it mean so little that to be a half second ahead well. or, 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 or to, you know, have things your way all the time, mm -hmm. you will upset, you know, get so upset that you kill somebody. Mercy. You know, and, and but when it boils down to it, we are inhumane one toward another because we, we first of all, we don't love ourselves like we ought to. Mm -hmm. And if we loved ourselves like we ought to, we'd have respect for the life of somebody else. Amen. Amen. Let me also go to Philippians chapter 2 on all this. Right. All, all this is all this is real good. When we're talking about the brethren, mm -hmm. when we're talking about proving <clears throat> that we love God by the way that we interface with one another, I like what Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse 3. He says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. How do we do that? In lowliness of mind, let each esteem others Greater. better than themselves. Mm -hmm. So you know what? 95% of all church conflicts are not doctrinal. They're about preference. That's right. If I can't have my way, nobody can get their way. Mm -hmm. And so guess what? Uh, it doesn't matter who the pre who, who's differing in opinion. If we put the things of others ahead of ours, that would eliminate about 95% of the problems that we have throughout the land well, and country in the body of Christ. Well, let's, let's even take it to a more personal relationship. 
between a husband and a wife, Amen. between a mother and a child, between mm -hmm. a brother. You know, when we put the needs, the desires, the good of the other above our own desires, our own needs, that, that generally diffuses. It has to. <laughs> it has to. Conflicts that, that cause relationship relationship ending statements to be made Amen. you know abusive uh, uh, relationships can be corrected mm -hmm. if we will just simply step out and do what God asks us to do Amen. and esteem the other well, well see this is why when I when I do marital counseling I'm very hard on the men because the Bible tells us in Ephesians 5 that the husband is the head of the wife and mm -hmm. the man swells his chest up when I say that mm -hmm. but I also say even as Christ is head of the church and gave, and gave himself for it. Mm -hmm. If Christ is willing to die for the church, then the husband needs to be ready to die for the wife. Now again, if he's willing to give his life for the wife, what is he going to hold back from the wife? Is he going to hold back the checkbook? I know I'm getting in trouble, but I got to do it anyway. <laughs> is he going to hold back some kind words? Is he going to hold yeah. back his own opinion? Mm. Is he going to put her needs and her will above his own? Above his own. Mm. If he's willing to give his life. Hey, my wife is, is watching. Hey, my wife is watching too. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, I'm bound by God's word Amen. if I'm a man of God. And, and the reason being is, like you, I've got children. Mm. Okay? And I want my daughter to marry a godly man. So I have to become the man that I want the type of man that I want her to marry. I've got sons, mm -hmm. and I want my sons to grow up and be a specific kind of man. Amen. That's not going to happen by just reading. They've got to see it exemplified in front of them, and I want to be that example. Amen. I would much rather they find a godly example at home than out somewhere else. Well, and, and we say that to segue just to let you know that, that, that your problems in life can be solved by adhering to the Word of God. Amen. If we get everybody to do that, not only would it solve the, the salvation issue from the fall that mm -hmm. we got to get to Absolutely. before we go to the end of the program, <laughs> but it'll, it'll solve the other problems in your life as well. Let's move on to the last great, and I'm going to combine two together. Amen. That that we call the Great Commission, Matthew yes, 28, 19, and 20, Mark mm -hmm. 16, 15, and 16. Mm -hmm. And then the, the great salvation, salvation. That, may, that, that is made possible thereby. Absolutely. Well, if we're, t if we're going to look at the, the Great Commission, notice the Great Fall came because of not keeping God's commandments. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus says the Great Commandments are loving God. Mm -hmm. And when you love God, the only way to prove that you love God is to keep His commandments. Mm -hmm. But now we have what's called the Great Commission. This is not up for debate. This is not no, an sir. optional uh, uh, it's set of instructions for every child of God. Every child of God is bound by the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. In times past, God did speak to us in, in, by, by the forefathers and mm -hmm. by the prophets, but now hath in these last days okay. spoken to us by His Son. So what did His Son say? Matthew 28, 19, He says, Go and teach all nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then He says, Teaching teach them. them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. It's amazing that we think that our job is over as soon as they get wet. I'm right. sorry, uh, when a person is baptized into Christ, that's just when our job truly begins if we're going to bring a new soul into the fullest, full knowledge of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They will never grow and mature in Christ if we never introduce Christ to them. That's right. And we can't do that just by presenting the word. Now, although that's effective. Well, it starts there. It starts there. But you know what? Uh, who, who was it that said, I'd rather see a sermon than hear a sermon any go. day? So every one of us who are children of God, we are walking sermons. We are living letters, as Peter calls us, walking epistles. Pa Paul. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Paul, that, Paul, <laughs> that Paul calls us. We are the very letters that folks ought to be able to read every line of our life and see Jesus is in it. You know, when I die on my tombstone, I don't necessarily want that he was a good husband or a good father. Mm -hmm. You know what I'd like, I prefer to have? That he has been with Jesus, mm. and now he is with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. You know, let, let, let's, let's, let's do this. Um, the Great Commission. Yes, Teach sir. them, uh, baptize them, yes, sir. and teach them again. The first teach is the first part that we hear, the hearing of the gospel. Absolutely. The, you know, not everybody knows the gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. But it's also the mind of Christ that caused him to do that Absolutely. and the result of that. Absolutely. That, that makes it possible for us to be brought back into a right relationship with God. Into his kingdom. And what we need to realize is, is that when we obey the gospel, we are being brought back into that right relationship Absolutely. with God. Absolutely. Now, that teaching to observe all things is, is what keeps us 
in the kingdom. <laughs> in the kingdom, Absolutely. in that right relationship with God. And, and therefore, that's the difference between what we teach mm -hmm. and what you might find later on the channel or on another channel or Absolutely. some other preacher. We're going to teach you that the Bible says that you've got to keep the, you know, you can't love God. Amen. Uh, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me say this. Uh, it's that teaching to observe all things whatsoever mm -hmm. I've commanded you. To come to Christ, some people say all you have to do is open up your heart and let him in. That's what they say. Well, let me, let me tell you something. Two things. First of all, Solomon said in, in Proverbs 28, 26, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. That's what the book okay, says. Okay, that's what the book says. That's not, that's not Brother Crosby. That's not Brother Williams. The Bible says if you trust your own heart, you're a fool. Why? Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all, above all things you know. and desperately wicked. Yes, sir. How many of us have been in bad relationships and we stayed in them because our heart says, I can make a difference in this individual's life? No, the heart lies and will continue to lie to you if it is not bound up in the word of God. That's right. David says, thy word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So guess what? It begins with the word of God in its purest form presented and obeyed. Now, once we obey that word of God, mm -hmm. That's why we can, we can then serve God with all of our heart because it's no longer ours. Galatians 2, uh, chapter 20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives, lives in, in me. me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So it's not praying a specific prayer that you cannot find in the Word of God. You just can't open up your heart and let Jesus in because that's nowhere in the Word of God. But... What happens if we neglect what Jesus said? The, the scripture says, we got 30 seconds left. Yes. How yeah. shall we escape? escape. How, what are we trying to escape? Hell. Amen. We're trying to escape eternal destruction. Separation How from shall God. we escape if we neglect so, so great, great a salvation. salvation? Great things from the Bible. Appreciate you this morning, Mike. And we encourage you to, to go over the scriptures that we've given you. Spend time. Do like the Bereans. Check and see if these things are not so. And if you find you have questions, email us, MetroplexTV at Yahoo.com or call the number that will shortly appear on your screen and make contact with us. If you don't want to make contact with us over the screen, go visit one of the churches you've seen or just open the yellow pages and find the Church of Christ nearest you. We're faced with the storms of life that pose many serious questions. For we may not know all of the answers. We do know where and in whom they lie. Let's do it Christ's way. May God bless you and keep you until the next time. What wonderful love I see. This has been Let's Do It Christ's Way. We would like to hear from our viewing audience, and as always, we encourage your questions and comments. Or if you're a member of the church and wish to help this broadcast, please send all correspondence to the Marcellus Avenue Church of Christ, 2431 South Marcellus Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216, or call 214-941-2531. You can email us at metroplextv at yahoo.com. Thank you for watching, and may God bless you in your study of his word.